So, sorry for the delay. And now the talk, um, Plants and Machines. Let it start. Thank you very much. Um, we are very, very um, honored to be here. Um, this is S2 from the Plants and the Machines project. Um, it's quite fresh image um, of us doing field research. Um, by now we are four people. We have um, a friend who helps us learn programming and <laughs> another one who supports us with um, other critical issues. But um, it's actually this garden where, where everything started out uh, about one year ago, a little bit more. And it was an equally dark and, and very, very sad and cold night when, when we came up with this question that um, how is it that everything in nature at this, in this hemisphere sucks so badly at being green? And so we thought like, okay, there, there are some solutions, some ways 600 watts and then others are producing red, blue light, which makes plants look sick from the beginning. Um, and we thought we could solve this problem. And so we made a little rendering and thought this is really nice. Um, it was planned to be one cubic meter for our little garden. And yeah, we, we planned everything from two water tanks for, for the wastewater and the fresh water and, and where the water should go. And in the middle, we planned for a pump. So we were almost done until we met a um, product designer who said, this shape is so expensive, you can just go file bankruptcy. <laughs> so um, we wouldn't do it anyway, but, but then there was this nice little party and, and there were these boxes and with a little bit of social engineering and, and building the, the lightning, um, we eventually ended up with one of those very beautiful boxes. Um, so um, that day we adapted our plan a little bit and we would now have fancy doors to open and close the garden and we we set, set immediately out to to have this plan because it was fully fully um working you see we have a plug and we have joints and and even even a little um plan for for what we wanted to do with the electricity and and, and computing so we, we put it into work and we asked the guy from the machine realm um, whether we could do it at this place and they thought, said like, okay, this is a very old building, it's like 1,000 liters of water you want to play with and um, basically um, we have all our technique here and, and you are not welcome. <laughs> so uh, we've had to find a new place and... This, this place was actually a garage and uh, there it didn't matter if we spilled uh, tons of water or, you know, burned some fuses, nobody would yell at us, we could pretty much do whatever we wanted. And um, the plan was to, to fit the tank um, through this door you see in the picture, um, which didn't quite fit. We made it fit eventually, but, you know, we thought, you know, you, you can't expect from anyone to hack a door first before hacking your garden. So we thought, you know, we, maybe we should scale it down a little bit more. Maybe we should make it a little smaller. And um, yeah. <laughs> but then about a year ago, um, I think it was the 24th of December, um, we went shopping and we got ourselves some heaters for the garage and some of the first boxes we, we used for a prototype or for proof of concept. And of course we bought some Christmas trees for our girls. So this is basically it. This is the first prototype or the proof of concept and um, it consists of a water reservoir down here, uh, the grow bed up here, and a top case um, covering it all. And one thing we did was to put fish um, inside the water reservoir to make it an aquaponic system. This way um, microorganisms living inside the grow bed can uh, generate or can, you know, convert um, toxic um, substances uh, from the water to um, nitrate um, to actually fertilize your plants. So, you know, um, with this kind of system, you, you would not have to balance um, fertilizer or nutrients inside your system. Pretty much runs on its own. Um, 
The system, the aquaponic system, is, uh, contains the a closed water loop. Um, there's no water loss in this kind of systems, um, except that due to um, evaporation. Um, so the water gets pumped up from the fish tank up to the grow bed. Um, the microorganisms living there take care of the um, toxic substances, convert it to nitrate. The plants take up the nitrate and uh, return the clear, clean water down to the bottom, uh, to the fish tank. This is pretty much our hardware um, stack for um, our first prototype. Um, you can see here an Arduino that is connected to one sensor we had at this time, a temperature and a humidity sensor for um, above the grow bed, and is then connected to um, some relay boards that are um, switching a pump, a heater, um, a bubbler or aerator, um, and the light. Um, the Arduino is then pretty much, or could be considered the autonomous uh, nervous system of your garden because it acts on its own. And the Raspberry Pi is um, the brain of the system where um, you log all, your, um, all things that are happening, happening in your garden in a database and um, the Raspberry Pi also uh, gives you an interface to uh, control several settings of your garden. One little problem we had to solve was um, we need to we need to make the Arduino um, aware of time because we had some um, time essential or time critical events like switching lights on and off or um, uh, like the flood cycle for the system and you could have just um, put a clock uh, in, inside the Arduino but we decided we would make this with uh, software interrupts where you actually use the um, microprocessor of the Arduino uh, with its full beautiful 16 megahertz to uh, count up to a specific number that, is, uh, that defines a certain time in, the, uh, or, yeah, in your system. And so when, when this number is reached, um, it's the uh, timer compare vector gets called and um, triggers your functions. So we were done with, with our, our first proof of concept and, and we thought oh, this could be could really be a robot you have at home. And and it's it's actually was really going very well. Um, what we what we grew inside we threw a lot of energy at the system, that's true, but um, therefore we got a lot of green and one problem with um, our our approach, because we wanted it to be so easy handi handleable, um, was if you if you look at the the um, thing, the opening. This was the biggest opening you would get if you would be one person. So it was very very wonderful for the teamwork because always one person would have to hold it up, and the other person would do the gardening, and then we we, we switch, <laughs> take turns, but eventually. We really produced nice things, and 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 now a few months ago, like real innovation takes time. Um, we figured that with one zip tie, you could just flip up the top and <laughs> do this all alone. So we are quite happy with the system, and, and it really worked well. We had to do nothing. Um, so yeah, we, we started with cresset, then we grew tomatoes and, 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 and radish and, and all this stuff. It was cute. Um, but then we thought like, oh, we can do this much better because with more technique, we can solve more problems. And so we came up with this plan of, of putting the bot back into botanics and <laughs> making... and make it really complex. Um, so by not stacking it on top of each other, but by um, verticalizing the setup and, and, and giving the water reservoir its own Arduino and, and the plant part its own Arduino. The, the thing is, you can with one such a water reservoir, you can in theory nourish many of those little um, plant boxes. And, and we wanted to see this happen. but. Um, before we wanted to put lots of lots of technic inside and we wanted basically to have a rack in the top as you can see that would measure the distance to the plants and then adjust and so it running the system felt really like printing food um, so it would slowly go up very very slowly we were not there when it happened um, but yes so 
but the rack had to be engineered and, and we started to, to experiment with LEDs and, and, and storm making machines that so we put like really lots of ventilation systems inside and, and the sensor you can see on, on the right hand side there's the, the distance sensor and then there's a light and humidity sensor and so on. But if you, if you really want to engineer a cute garden um, you don't want your plants to miss out on all the kitsch of nature and that's why we even added um, a humidifier and said fog it. Um, this is really going to be pretty. It turned out this humidifier was way too much for our cables, it burned everything. But <laughs> it was pretty for one. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we made huge, huge, huge progress because from this system on we never had to work together to feed our fish, we were, which we were still doing every day by hand. Um, and, and we added a pH sensor because yeah, we wanted to find out more and, and there are so many, many little places where you can tweak your system, like with the amount of oxygen you can make your fish fitter or <laughs> with less oxygen they swim higher. And <laughs> but, but we were always kind of really, really aware of, of giving them high quality life and, and making it really nice for them. We, we gave them existential experiences and <laughs> <laughs> one thing, one thing when designing such a, such a system is um, you, you you have to make sure everything is water and, and airtight. But because like the standard or normal um, connector sockets you would use to attach those solenoid valves, for example, are made out of metal or um, uh, yeah, made out of metal that is not stainless steel. Um, you know, there's um, there's some danger that you get um, toxic substances in, inside your system that will harm your fish, uh, your microorganisms, your plants, and unfortunately, or could even harm you when when you eat the fish or the plants later on. Um, so you know, one solution when something is not watertight would be to just drown it in uh, epoxy, which we did here. Um, of course, uh, this is watertight now, or this was watertight. But if you run into a problem and had, had to had to switch um, some hardware, um, yeah, you would you would ha have corpses laying around in your system because you know this this middle one is cut out; it's not functioning anymore. And of course, you know, when we said we wanted to make this a full-blown system and wanted to make it really cool and pretty and put lots of sensors and actors in there, we didn't realize that it eventually, in the end, would look something like this, so it would be a rather uh, complex system in the end. Um, and this is uh, um, the data that gets sent from the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi, um, just uh, from, from the one grow bed uh, you, you, you've seen in, the, in this picture. Um, yeah, as we said before, modularity or accessibility was really important because you don't want two people when you're gardening, so we had to make every connection like pluggable like these. We used um, ATX and USB connectors and Molex connectors to, um, you know, uh, wire up our sensors and actors and to be able to, to um, take off the top very easy. But still, there's lots of cables and we actually had to use a um, separate box just for the power supplies. We had four different power supplies because, you know, if you start building things, you, you, don't, you, know, you, you gather experience and the next time you do it right. But at this point in time, we had a lot of power supply units. Yeah, so this was, was not so elegant um, as we imagined. but. Um, on the other hand, also very, very expensive, and, and we thought like this is not really what we want. And, and if we want people to, to help us, um, we will not <laughs> go this way. So we, we, we thought about what we did, and we thought like oh, there were really nice things we had in the one and in the other system. And we thought the first one was was much nicer to hack with because even if your code fails, um, you could not really spill water somewhere or, or get in contact with electricity. So we thought we, we keep the modularity of the second one, um, but um, keep the, the setup of the first one, I'm, I'm afraid this. Yeah. Um, and, and it would look like this, it was much bigger, much, much bigger. So it's actually like this size um, right here. And so we took a few tubes and, and used, um, I don't know, gardening um, steckers. Um, <laughs> 
for 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 making the boxes airtight and fit on top of each other, but um, while while still being handleable. And we also invented the double molex, the double molex um, stickers. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this word is going to haunt me. Um, and and we were really happy when we when we came up with with um, eventually with this enormous bot. Um, it had had an off switch which was very very easy handleable and, and otherwise it was very simple but but it worked very well with um with the chili we had planted before um so we have proving pictures for the happiness of the fish um we we switched them for bigger ones it was actually an accident but the guy in the shop said they are extra dirty so <laughs> we thought that's a good thing and <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, actually we have extra huge chili now. Um, and then there there was this message that hit us. Um, we, we basically were never expected to come up here. Um, and and that was the moment when we got really nervous, <laughs> and and thought like, okay, let's let's try it again and make it really beautiful and and perhaps get some help from other people too. Um, so we started a kitchen process where we wanted um, to break down everything onto one voltage, which more or less worked well. But um, because we voided so many warranties on the way there, um, we thought like we never really liked the water heaters because they have inherent safety and that is less control for us. And so we, we started to design our own heating things. <laughs> <for> <laughs> which we would fill up with really lots of um, silicon, which was very expensive and, and not food, food safe either. So we thought we had to do it again and if you, would you like them? Yeah? yeah, so we've we done it again and we, we pretty much stuck to the, to the basic design of a heating element, which is um, resistive wire wrapped around a um, steel co coil or metal coil. We put it into an uh, aluminum pipe, we sealed it off with super at the ends and then put it into a plexiglass pipe which are um, then capped by, by wooden caps. Yeah, and it works quite nice. One thing we had to solve though was, or still had to solve though, was the feeding process of the fish because, um, well, we were still feeding our fish every day uh, un unless we forgot this. But, um, <laughs> and we made a really nice rendering of a fish feeder and we thought about printing it out and uh, rapid prototyping it, but um, when we calculated the cost for this, we saw uh, we said it was another bot, huh? was another bot. <laughs> so we decided to you know just um, do it in one day do it with a small little box uh, as a reservoir for the food have a little motor on the outside of the box which has uh, or is connected to um, to a rod that rotates takes away some food and um, puts it into into the fish tank so in this bot we have uh, automated feeding now and of course the wiring too is a lot more organized. We used ATX, 24-pin um, ATX um, cables all the way. Um, everything is connected up to there. And the hardware stack stayed the same as in the prototype before. It's a little bit more complex. We're working on, on sorting things out right now. Um, we're actually trying to design a Raspberry Pi board um, to, to um, yeah get rid of the Arduino and we're um, implementing a bus uh, system for our sensors, so, yeah, but still. So, um, we are very used to uh, adapting rapidly. Um, we wanted to give you a demo, <laughs> but, but somehow we have issues. Um, yeah. It's good that we are late. <laughs> Ah, we don't have issues anymore. So, um, so this was the moment when we we thought we need help and and we adapt again, and 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 we found a friend who is basically in gaming and gaming and gaming and and he loves interfaces and he really takes time to make code look nice, and work stick and so so we tried to corrupt him because like we are poor students and and we thought like okay perhaps if we say he gets the spot um he would help us develop a really really nice interface so um we'd ask him up here and give us give you a little demo if he's in the room uh, yeah okay <laughs> how does it work next, yeah next no. hello <laughs> hello i'm dex i'm the guy yeah 
this is my bot. <laughs> and yeah, the guy said something about technical difficulties. I just fixed them right there. And I'm now switching to the browser and hopefully. With the escape button. Okay, with the escape button. This is a Mac. I don't have a Mac. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. so, okay. <laughs> Okay, so I can take this. Nee, du Thank hast kein, du hast kein Screen hinter dir. Ich habe so eine Demo ist only for you. Ah, um, yeah, okay, I can do the demo for myself. Nee, uh, this is probably uh, <laughs> <laughs> this button, I guess. Yeah, should be. Yeah, if it stays on this side of the screen. Go for it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so now I have the screen down there. All right. So um, the first things I got asked from the guys when they came to me was, how can we make this free boxes something you can love? Something you really want to have as your gardener. And for this, we somehow needed a face for this thing. And as I'm still a programmer and not a designer, I made an ASCII face, <laughs> which is now, for now, the face of the bot. And what we learned so far is um, what I learned when I did some animation was that if you have a face, you need to make it blink, otherwise it's no face. So the first thing I did was write an ASCII bot class, <laughs> which has nothing to do with the bot at all, but it makes a nice face. Um, and it should, if everything works, show at some point. This is, um, the bot does its own AP for now, so it runs in um, backup mode and makes a, smi a small tiny ASCII face. Ah. And the very thing, the first thing it asks you, what's your name? Uh, what's my name? So you can name it, then name yourself as the guy who built it, and then later on it's, um, it's meant to guide you through the setup process to actually build the bot from the Arduino and what you got for now. For now, we have this <laughs> and the um, prototype interface. So I'm switching back to the prototype interface. You, uh, did it blink? It didn't. Oh well, um, <laughs> it will blink hopefully here. Uh, I can. Come on, be nice. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. This is this, and yeah, this is another iteration of this thing when I was just working for it. And this is the interface we have now. Usually there's a webcam picture, yes, a webcam picture, where you can see what the cam is picking up and show pointing down. And then, yeah, we have posted a manual override because it just started up and you don't want it to start spewing food out or whatever. So um, what's how, how we do we start with this? This is, um, we, we have to set a point. So, so for now we have a pl um, the plant which um, you can see here. But for now, we have the capsicum Chinese, which is actually inside the bot. You um, then can set reference values for each of the um, things, which will hopefully update the photograph. So for example, this capsicum Chinese needs a reference temperature of 30 degrees. So we can set the 30 degrees and pass it on and the bot will try to then either heat or not heat the system to uh, um, get to those 30 degrees Celsius. The same can be done for more stuff like um, humidity is, um, uh, if the fan spins up to get more air in, when we will find out if the humidity is a bit bigger, there's more humidity outside. Uh, so we have, um, we will implement some feature where you can tell the bot the location and lati the latitude and longitude and it will grab weather from it and if, you, if it knows it's outside you can either pump air in if you need more humidity or out if you hope you can somehow solve this problem. Yeah. Then you have the light intensity, it's rather bright, it can be brighter, I will show you. And yeah, the soil temperature, there, there are sensors in the soil and there are sensors in the water and of course there's heating and everything. Also we have the awesome machines part, where you can actually turn things off and on <laughs> again. <laughs> it's like the delay from the sun to us is seven minutes. Here it's a bit shorter. <laughs> and, 
Yeah. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Now we can also flood, which shows that we can pump the water from down here to up here. And at some point, it hopefully stops because it reaches the water sensor. I'm guessing, I'm not pushing. Look, Ma, no hands. And it stops. <laughs> yeah. From here. Yeah. yeah. So this is what we have from, for now. And what, what I want to have is some kind of botnet <laughs> where the bots can ex exchange information about how to grow the plants and you, the actual uh, people behind the gardeners <laughs> um, can share recipes or how to do this. And for this, I will hand it back to what machine learning paths we actually want to have. Thank you very much. We miss, miss all the precious time we would have loved to tell you so much more. Um, but hopefully next year um, or in the coming year we will be able to, to release the software so we get people who help us collect data and perhaps as, as together we could make a foundation of public knowledge in form of data where you can statistically analyze what is really good for plants and fish and, and make this accessible for many people. This is our, our big hope and then we are very, very um, hoping that people find out whether a speaker in a robot like this would make a difference for the fish or the plants.